combination and scoring. Um, What'd you average? Somewhere around 22, 23. It's tough to score 22 in college, bro. You know, <laughs> ain't no illegal defenses. <laughs> like, you got to be a bucket uh, to average yeah. 22. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. And then yeah. um, ended up playing Northeastern, and this was my last game at Drexel. Okay. So we were at Northeastern, um, first five minutes of the game, whatever, you know, trying to go get a, get, get a bucket. Dude chopped down on my shooting hand, and I went to shoot a free throw, and I airballed it. And I was like, all right, like something, something, something ain't right. not right. So, um, you know, ended up whatever. Then I shot the next free throw, made it, kept playing the whole rest of the game, played all 40 minutes. Go to the doctor after the – no, at halftime, my trainer was like something was wrong because my hand started to swell up. Yep. So I just told him just to buddy tape it, and, uh, and I'm not coming out. And then, come back uh, out there and hoop. Come back out there and hoop. Finish the game. We lost, but uh, I had 30 points with a broken hand, with a broken shooting hand. <laughs> That's crazy. That's so a true that, testimony of how you never – bro, like, you know, we'll get to, like, the, you know, the meat and potatoes of the – you know, but, like, that shows you. It started back then. That never, that never quit. That always yeah. believing in yourself attitude has has started at a young age, and that's something I think people need to know. This ain't something that has just started now of you know having to go to the D League or come up like you've always. That's almost been your story, and you've always overcame. And I mean that's an amazing thing. So you go from Drexel, you break your hand, you have thirty, and then how were you able to pull off another year at Louisville? Uh, because the grad transfer. Because I so my the year I told my ACL at Drexel, I uh. I only played four games, so I think okay. you can only play up to 30% of the season. Got it, got it, got it, got so, it. So, yeah, I played those four games, then ended up, you know, I just made sure I had to, had to graduate, and then mm -hmm. uh, ended up doing a grad transfer at Louisville. And what what was the, like, like you said, you, you transferred up. Were there any other schools that were like, uh, yo, you should come here? What made you choose Louisville? Was it Coach Bellotto? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Coach Bellotto, Kenny, uh, Coach, Coach P. I mean, yep. honestly, with – when it came down to the schools and I said that I was transferring, probably about every school in the in the country called. Oh, really? Every school? Yeah, it was like, I mean, uh, like, yeah. I, I mean, mean you, you average top five. You're a top five score. Every school yeah. wants to score. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, so you, you, you transferred to Louisville. How was your experience there? You played well there. Yeah, so guys, uh, it was. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, you go. I said, so you, you played well at Louisville. You had a great season. But you couldn't play in the NCAA tournament. Do you think that they that may have like diminished or like halted your your draft status by not having the overall world see who you were? Uh, yeah. I mean, like that that was one thing that I that I did think hurt it because like one knock that was on me was that I never got to play on the biggest stage and never. Oh, that's what they say. The yeah, I mean, it was it was of one of those things that was like floating around. So. Yep. For me, obviously, you know, going to Louisville, being with the, you know, uh, school and a and a legacy that they've had for you know the past ten fifteen years. Hundred percent. I mean, even before that, going dating back to like Derek Smith, like Nolan's dad and yep. Daryl Griffith and all of them, you know, just going there, knowing that you know we'd be able to play in the tournament. For me, it was it was it was Everything. a no brainer. Yep. And then once we, you know, we got the postseason ban, obviously that that couldn't happen. But mm -hmm. I mean, I still wouldn't trade my time there and my experiences there for anything because, like, I I, I feel like me getting drafted isn't my story. A hundred percent. Me having something that's that's given to me, or you know, having having a handout or having something there, that's just that's just not my story. Like everything 100%. that I've been through, God's put me through tests and tests, like. I know you're going to be able to make it through this, and there's something better for you that's on the other side. The fact. And there's more people in the world that can relate to your story than they can to be, like, getting drafted. or You know what I mean? So, yeah. so next thing, okay, you go to the draft. You don't get drafted. You're in the D League for your first two years, right? Yep. So you're in the D League for your first two years in Santa Cruz. You so ball. my first year in, in the D League, which yeah. this, of course, even, even makes the story even – Yeah, so tell me about that process. Like, like, right. So don't get drafted. Um, yep. Go to Boston for training camp and yep. go to the D League, play with the main Red Claws. Yep. And uh, probably about two weeks before I'm about to get a, my first call up. My age, it was right before the 10 days started. Mm -hmm. um, playing in Grand Rapids, which is the Detroit Pistons yep. uh, D, D League. Yep. And – I'm on defense. I go to cut cut the guy off, make a stop, get the MRI the next day, and then I got a partially torn ACL in my left knee. So 
obviously the same rehab, same yep. process. Got to go through the whole thing over again. Then, uh, you know, come back the next year and just try to. But how does that, what do you think this mindset from, bro? Where does this mindset come from where it's like you can tell me you, you get hurt, you got to come back? Like, where do you get this passion for the game? They're like, yo, like, I'm not stopping. Like, it's. Uh, honestly, it's, it's, it, it really boils down to my mom and my mm -hmm. immediate family. Like, mm -hmm. knowing the sacrifices that they made for me and, and mm -hmm. what they did mm -hmm. for me to have a shot to even, you know, go to college. Uh, mm -hmm you know, play basketball, do all that. It's like, I know that what they did for me, I got I, I got to work just as hard for myself and for my family. And in all that, still have faith in God, knowing that, you know, there's there, there there's a reason why I'm going through this. Yep. Maybe something in my, in my personal life isn't right. You know what yep. I mean? So maybe I got to fix that because I know that basketball is always going to be there while I'm healthy and while 100%. I'm able to play. 100%. And I know that I, I that I can make an impact on any team, but it's just a matter of all right. Maybe there's something that's in my personal life. Maybe I got to get right with God. Maybe mm -hmm. I got to, you know, get right with my relationships and yep. my friendships. Yep. Yep. And I can get back to hoop. And you focus on all those things in the time where you were down. You were starting to focus on the other things outside of ball that you think would is a testimony to you straightening up and to be able to reap the benefits. So you know you got you got hurt your with Matt, with Rick. Red Claws, what's called? Maybe, yeah. right? Yeah. So then your next year, you're with Santa Cruz, correct? Yeah. And you ball out with Santa Cruz. Yeah. You're playing well. And then you got your first call up win. On March 13th, 2018, uh, by the Atlanta Hawks. Okay. I said, okay, you get caught up by the Hawks. And when people understand, bro, when you were getting minutes, you was getting buckets. Like, you, you averaged like 12 last year. Like, we'll, we'll, yeah. get, we'll get to that. But, like, so you go to the Hawks. And then what happens from the Hawks? To Warriors, what's the process in between that? What, what, what so, that? Uh, finish out these things like the last 15, 20 games with the Hawks. Um, and then, you know, uh, ended up being a free agent. And then mm -hmm. the Warriors offered me a two way. Mm -hmm. So, for explain me, a two way contract to people because I don't think a lot of people know what a two way contract is. Explain okay. what that is a two way yeah, contract. Uh, in the NBA. So, two way contract, it's in, I believe it's in hockey and baseball as well. So, basically, a two way contract is. The major league team owns your rights, yep. but there's a possibility where you could, there's a certain amount of days you can be up with the major league. Otherwise, you'll be down with their minor league team. Yep. So it's it's kind of like a uh, you know big brother system or mm -hmm. big sister system. So you know you run the same plays, the same organization, the same everything, but it's obviously you're just down with your minor leagues. Hundred yeah. percent. Okay, so from there you get you're down Santa Cruz. You're caught up to the Warriors. You're playing very well. And then the media gets a hold of this whole thing and says, oh, the only reason that he's on the team is because of the family thing. And I wanted to bring home – I wanted to talk about this with you on the narrative because at the end of the day, right, all the people that were bashing saying, oh, it's the family thing. But if you look at it from the corporate side, right, let's, let's, let's dis disregard basketball. In the corporate – not saying that that's what happened, but in the corporate side, that's what happens. The owner of the team is going to put his son on or his nephew or whatever, whatever. And not saying that that's the narrative that happened in your world, but it sucks that when you're an athlete, you always get the bad end of the stick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We know the work you put in. We know you deserve that spot. But it's just it's so weird how the media can misconstrue stuff. But for you, you're a true testimony of like, it don't matter what's going to happen, you're going to overcome. And yeah. that was a short – that was something very small to happen. And you overcame, but it's like, and when I looked at it, I'm like, although I know, and we all know, the whole world knows that you're you're more you're more than qualified to play, but they looked frowned upon that even if that was a thing. But that's what happens at every corporate business. Yeah, CEOs bring the nephews, general manager, owner brings in this, and that's how it should be. You shouldn't be looked down upon of if I'm another player and I'm bringing in somebody else like the narrative needs to change and although that you deserve that spot I want to use this time to say people got to stop looking at life like that you, we, we're putting this world to help our family out to help people that you love so you know at the end of the day I'm glad that you're be, you're able to like get through that because I know how much that means where you put a lot of work in your whole life and they try to take that away from you yeah. and yeah. talk about that process where you overcame and back to back bucket 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 yeah, you know I mean, I mean like, like my main thing was, you know, just last year, uh, 
obviously my first year I didn't I didn't uh necessarily have any not anything to say but there was a lot of stuff that was bigger than me so yeah. obviously with you know the whole team and us trying to do a three p and everything yep. like there's there's no need for me to interject my thoughts and my and my beliefs yep so you know i I felt like that when the time was right to speak on it, then mm -hmm. I would speak on it and that was great job yeah great job so mm -hmm. in the in the beginning of the season you know i i the first time that I had media uh availability, I basically just told him like at the at the n b a like don't use me as a I'm not using other people as a crutch. Don't try yep. to associate my name as a crutch. I respect my family. I respect my wife's family. I respect everything. But at the end of the day, if you want to talk about basketball, then I'm fine with talking about that. But there's nothing going to be talking about family because this is my job. 100%. I'm not going to someone else's job and asking them about their family. Exactly. And, and the way you did it was very professional in the, in the way you said it. And then you, and then you backed it up. You know, that was the second part. And, and the thing that I love is how the guys got behind you as well. And I'm mm -hmm. a true believer that as, as, as athletes, as players, we got to come together and pick each other up. Because if we don't pick each other up, the team ain't going to pick us up. The ownership may not pick you up. As you see, you know, you know the ownership is taking 25% of your contracts. So it's like somebody has to come together to big up us, the players, the athletes, because at the end of the day, we all we got. And yeah. for you, your story is a true inspiration to tons of little kids across the globe that are have dreams of making the NBA, have dreams of playing at the highest level, but may have to play at the at a lower level. But like you're a true testimony, bro, of like being an elite guard in the NBA and rolling with the punches, bro. You never stopped. Like you never yeah. stopped. Like you like it never stopped. And like I wanted you to get on here so people could see you face to face. Yeah, we see you on the NBA, we see you playing, but like people don't get a chance to really know who Damian Lee is what Damian Lee went through, where you came from, you know, multiple injuries, multiple people saying you shouldn't make the league when you make it to the league. If you make it to the league, it don't matter who put you on. Like, it's a reason why you make the NBA. It's, it's nothing to do with anybody. It's your skill, though. And it's amazing to see someone like yourself kind of go through all of that and still be here, man, and just, like, like congratulations on that, because it's not, it's no, not an easy you. thing to do. And now you're here to tell your story. Um for the rest of the kids that are trying to make that league and do those things. So then going to that, like you're also doing a lot of stuff off the court. Usually it's like you in the NBA, like we said before, you shouldn't be doing these things. Like, you know, you sign your extension, but you're also, you have foundations, you have uh, the leeway foundation. Tell me about what the leeway foundation is and, and what does it go to? Yeah. So uh, the leeway foundation is a, a nonprofit that myself and my mom started uh about two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, the Lee is a play off my last name, obviously, but it's leveraging excellence through experiences. Mm. So for us, it's it's just about helping, you know, helping kids out. And this was always a dream that my mom had, um, you know, give back to the community and start her own mm -hmm. nonprofit. So for us to, so for her to live vicariously through me and have this dream that we can now put to life and we can help kids out, whether it's in the inner city of Baltimore, inner city of Louisville, you know, just kids that, uh, you know, may be going through certain things mm -hmm. or may have may have had traumas in their lives, showing them that we can use basketball as a tool or sports as a tool to bring you out of what you're going through. But that also <laughs> doesn't define you just being an athlete. Man, that's I mean, that's that's amazing, bro. And, it's, and like I said, a lot of times guys are like, oh, I'm not I'm not the number one player, so I shouldn't do anything like, bro, you you're uh like, to any child out there that has an NBA dream, like, you're almost like the perfect story to let them know that, yo, if you if you did it, anyone could do it because you didn't stop. And that's the narrative. Like, you never quit. You never gave up. You were never down on yourself. And you always believed in self. And, like, that, that story, that narrative needs to be told for this generation of these kids coming up. Like, the NBA draft is coming up. Like, people need to hear that story. Like, don't get caught up in, you know – going to a big school or not going to a big school, like, think about yourself, working it's going to be for you. And true testimony, you signed a three-year extension with the Warriors. How was that feeling of, you know, getting that big, that, that look, you know, extension for three years, like, okay, I got a little bit of, like, I got a little bit of breathing room. I can actually yeah. breathe a little bit. Like, what was that feeling like? Or when you heard it, like, what was your first thought? <laughs> <laughs> so the funny thing, 
like I, I got this I got this bottle of tequila that like I told my wife that I'll like only drink. And I didn't even drink the shot until uh so I I think I signed it on the fifteenth. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't take a shot until the seventeenth. And for yeah. me, like taking the shot on the seventeenth was such a special day because my grandmother passed away January seventeenth, two thousand eleven. Oh wow. So like taking that day and just like remembering that and mm -hmm. knowing how much she meant to me and knowing how much she like dreamt of me playing and all this stuff, like knowing mm -hmm. that she's always with me mm -hmm. was like probably the best feeling. But to be completely honest, like I still don't feel like I've made it. Like Yeah, hundred percent. Like I haven't I haven't had that that thought or that like feeling that it's like all right, like I'm settled and I can I'm take good. my foot off mm -hmm. of, of, off the gas, you know what I mean? And that makes I mean and that's a true testimony of your story. You're ne it's never enough. Like it's like what's next? Woody, what's up, boy? It's like, you know, it's like what's next? And it's like, you know, for now, how much pressure is it? Like we talk about the curries, right? Like, you know, Steph is a great friend of mine, me and Steph are roommates. Um, in 2009, preparing for the draft. Like, how much pressure is it? Like, yo, good thing you can shoot. No, you fit right <laughs> in. Like, <laughs> like, good thing you got a strap. But is there any added pressure for yourself? Like, yo, like, I'm in the Curry family now. Like, I got a hoop. Like, Curry is, you know, you got Seth, you got Steph, you got Pops. Like, is there any, any, like, in your back of your mind? Like, yo, let me just, what is that like? No, um, no pressure. I mean, because, like, I... I always, you know, believe in myself. It, mm -hmm. it don't matter if I was it, whoever my, you know, relatives are. Yep. Um, I mean, yeah, there's really no pressure with that. I think it's more so just me wanting to be my own man and provide for my family. Mm -hmm. That's that's 100%. that's the biggest, uh, not necessarily pressure, but like that's that's the biggest thing that I take out of everything is like I knew that you know whenever I got married and. Whenever, you know, I grew up, whether it was basketball or music or, or I don't know, being a weatherman, like I want to be the best person that I could be in whatever that profession is so that I could try to provide the best for my family and whatever the future holds. I mean, 100%, I mean you're doing a great job at it, bro. And I mean, don't stop what you're doing. Continue to believe in what you're doing, because if you didn't believe in self, you wouldn't be where you are right now. And like you said, bro, you got a long way to go. You know, you just getting started. Congrats on the extension. Um, it, it means a lot to me because we went to the same high school. You know what I mean? I yes, remember when sir. you had the flat top. That shit was <laughs> the flat top was terrible. 10 years ago, baby. <laughs> I'm so glad you got to do hair, dude, because that flat top was not Come it. on, now. Oh, you were locked I up. I love that. You look good. You, you blended right Come on, in. now. I'm locked like, up. <laughs> you locked up. But yeah, I just wanted to say, man, like, continue to, to do what you're doing, bro, and and continue to fight, man. We need more people um, to have that underdog, that fight story, because there's more Damian Lees than there is LeBron James. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's, they come a dime a dozen, but you, you're a true testimony and a true story where people need to hear. And I'm glad that you were able to come on here and share some of the tidbits of, you know, what you've been through and, and, and kind of like where you're going. I also want to say shout out to your wife. I saw she just did a new hair care thing. Yep. That. Yes, sir. Shout out to your wife. Um, once again, shout out to you. Shout out Calvary Hall, bro. Thank you for thank you so much for coming on, bro. Don't stop. Continue to defy all odds. And I'm yes, always sir. your biggest fan. You already know. Anything you need on my end, yes, bro, sir. I got you. And whenever you want to hop on here, let me know. You're more than welcome every time, bro. Love, bro. Yes, sir. Thank you, family. Yes, no sir. doubt, bro. Love, bro. Yep. Peace.